Okay, our last presenter for this morning's session is Kusa T. Jim Lemon Kusa, come on up. There he is. <laughs> How are you doing? Round of applause for Jim. Well, thank you, everyone. My name is Jim Lemon Kusa, and I'm the founder and CEO of Kusa T, which is the world's first premium organic instant tea. But before I get into the product, I wanted to give you a little background on who I am and why I became the CEO of a tea company. So when I was in college, I studied abroad in, in Hong Kong, studying international business, and I fell in love with tea. This boy from northeastern Ohio had only known Lipton tea up to that point, and the array of tea in China is just incredible. Well, I came back, finished school, and then after I graduated, my wife and I moved to Asia, and we lived there for two and a half years. We taught English in Thailand, we went to Nepal to learn to meditate, climbed mountains, and then we ran out of money, and so we had to go back and get real jobs. And so, I've lived and worked in Boulder for the past 15 years, and I've worked with amazing companies like Eco Products in the uh, food service industry, Good Belly here in the beverage and grocery industry, as well as Dina Fit in Salewa, which is in the outdoor industry. Well, I've always wanted to have my own company, and so the idea for that started when I was on a backpacking trip in 2016, and all my friends were drinking Starbucks via instant coffee, and I don't drink coffee, it gives me reflux, and so I, was, I had wet, soggy tea bags, and they were in this Ziploc bag that I was keeping in my backpack, and somehow that bag opened up, and all this tea juice got all over my stuff, and I was so frustrated and said, why don't we have the Starbucks via version of tea? So I set out on a year-long R&D process to create an instant tea that tastes just like a fresh brewed cup. And so I went through all the traditional methods for dehydration, things like powderization, but tea absorbs a bunch of water, so it just would sink to the bottom of your cup and make a sludge. I tried spray drying and freeze drying, which are high heat or extreme cold dehydration. Both of those take out all of the aroma, the flavor, the nuances, and the antioxidants of tea. So the breakthrough happened because of my wife's eye cream. She wears this rose extract eye cream every night. And I said, how are they getting rose petals into an extract? So I started researching botanical extraction technology. And I did a lot of modifications, so I'm cutting the story short here, but essentially it worked like a charm. So what we're doing is we're putting organic tea leaves, we buy the top 5% of tea leaves in the world, we put it in room temperature water, and then we pressurize it to 500 PSI, and then we leave it for eight hours. And it's that time and pressure that encourage the tea leaves to steep into water that it normally wouldn't want to, it normally needs hot water. So after it's done steeping, we strain out all the tea leaves and we actually compost it on site and use it as fertilizer in the organic tea farm. Because think about how many billions of tea bags get thrown in the trash and they're perfectly compostable. So then we've got the liquid tea. We move it to a machine called a vacuum dehydrator. Now a vacuum dehydrator is shaped like a mini submarine. We fill it halfway up with tea. The air above it, we move to 0% humidity. So the water that's in the tea evaporates into the air above it. After it hits 30% humidity, we, we vent that air and turn it back to zero and let it run again. And essentially, after about eight hours, the tea has lost all of its water, but nothing else. It still has all the aroma, the flavor, the antioxidants. So we package it immediately into the tea sticks, and um, essentially, the consumer, as soon as the consumer opens it, they can put it in hot or cold water. It rehydrates in three seconds, and they have an amazing cup of organic, green, or organic tea um, that tastes just like a fresh brewed cup. So we launched just a year ago. We're already in 750 retailers, including REI Nationwide, King Supers and Safeway in Denver. We're launching into Sprouts Nationwide in August, and we're doing an enormous direct-to-consumer business because guess what? This is really cheap to ship around the world. We've won two silver medals, so I entered my teas in the Global Tea Championship last year. The judges didn't know they were tasting instant tea, and they gave us two silver medals. So it proves that we're, we're beating out loose leaf and bag teas. So I wanted to leave you with here, I think there's five reasons why Kusa Tea is going to be successful in the long term. One is that we're on trend. So we are targeting that millennial Gen X consumer that's looking for organic, clean ingredient labels, and convenience. And by the way, they all carry around reusable water bottles, so they can dump this in wherever they go. Second is that we're omni-channel. We can go into food service, outdoor channel, grocery channel, travel, hospitality, and direct-to-consumer. Third is that our gross margins are 80%. So as the business grows and scales, we're going to be able to fund inventory and marketing. Fourth is it's a proven concept. I mean, Starbucks Via did an amazing job of giving a premium coffee product to that consumer, and I'm adding that tea element. So I've literally never had a buyer say no. They get it immediately. So now it's just trial and awareness from the consumer standpoint. 
And last but not least is I have an amazing team. I've built a team of industry experts and advisors that we've been there. We've been in these channels with distributors um, and we know the bumps and bruises that we should avoid. And so we're gonna be successful in the long term. And so I'll just leave you with, it's not often that a product comes along that disrupts and reinvigorates a category. And Kusa Tea is doing that and we're just getting started. Thank you. Well done. Organic tea in three seconds. Jim, uh, what do you think of Kusa Tea? Well, you're asking someone that was born in South Georgia, so we drink it by the gallon. So I, I think it tastes really good. Um, and this is on trend because, you know, the issues with packaging and everything. The only question I'm sitting here thinking, premium instant, you, you've, you've got to reconcile that. Can you, is there anything else you could call it to get away from instant or that's too confusing because you're, you're already having to switch the minds of consumers and maybe that's easy to do, but... Yeah, it's a challenge, no question. Um, I wish there was another adjective that we could use at this point, but we also want to make sure the consumer gets it, what they're buying. So I think as the category evolves, we should be able to change that adjective as the consumer gets educated. But for now, I want to make sure that they know what they're yeah. buying. And I wouldn't be shy about redefining it yourself, you know, if it's steep tea or whatever else, because, you know, again, down the road, when other people try to copy you, you you've got a point of difference, but I think it's really tasty. Uh, Gigi, Jim talked a lot about the processing method, the manufacturing method, you know, how important is that for an investor to hear that they have uh, something that stands out from anybody else coming into the category of competition? Um, I think it can be a really important point of differentiation, but when I heard you talk about the process, for me, it just, the question about scale came up, so I think um, it would be good to understand what that looks like, you know, how intensive it is, how protectable it is, those kinds of things. Um, and I just wanted to comment a little bit about the package is, um, because there will be an education component, when you just look at the um, front, you don't know what's inside. So I, I think it'll be important to kind of find a way to communicate that. Thank you. John, taste-wise, um, did you feel like this, is, this can stand up to steep tea? Um, I mean, I'm not someone who uh, is really like a hot tea drinker too often. Um, I mean, it tastes really good. I guess, you know, I was trying the one that was chilled. It, I guess, being honest, it doesn't taste that much better than what I might get from a bottle, although obviously, you know, for the use occasions you've pointed out, that doesn't necessarily work. Um, you know, I think kind of similar to what um, some of the other panels said, um, it wasn't really clear to me looking at the package, like what was unique about it or different. Um, I feel like there's a lot of, you know, I don't know, noise when it comes to like, you know, tea companies and packaging. It's like their only way to differentiate, right? So, I mean, I think what you said about, you know, three seconds is pretty interesting, not to go like, you know, eight minute abs on this thing here, but, you know, calling out the speed or something like that, I, I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, it certainly tastes nice, looks nice. Um, you know, I guess I wonder if the process you just described to us in the beginning, like, is, is that something that, you know, someone who's a larger, more established tea company can just go replicate? Um, I think I forgot to mention in the presentation, we have 22 patents on the process. So it's going to be really hard for somebody else to replicate what we're doing. Okay, so that's good to know too. So, yeah. Paula, interesting packaging. Uh, it was mentioned a few different times. I'll give you the last yeah. word. Yeah, so I agree with everything. I, I, calling, it, calling it something different, showing that it's something different, it's interesting because of the palette that you chose and it's in those little packets. There's a lot of artificial things in those little packets too. So you might not think that it's real tea. So doing something on the pack like a real tea leaf dissolving into something or making it into little bits or a window on it so you could see these beautiful little packets. I would also have a lot more fun with those little packets so that if you threw them in your bag separately, they're really iconic on their own. Right now they're just a replica of the outside. Um, you could have a lot more fun with that. But I, I would, the packaging for this is actually the thing that would probably make people want to try it. So need to nail that. <laughs> That's All right, great feedback, good job. Thanks so much. Thank you.